Hey friends, it's time for us to get back into our Think Fair Trade First book. This is our inquiry for our um, Costly Choices unit about um, lesson about fair trade. So we started off with some sketch notes last week. I think we have two more sessions with this book. So let's get going. We talked about supply chain and we talked about the eight principles. There's eight principles of fair trade. Let's go over them. Creating jobs for people who aren't usually hired. That might be people with disabilities. Caring for the environment, maybe using recycled materials or being careful with their materials. Uh, capacity building. People who work for fair trade companies get training in business skills, help them improve their business. Uh, the pay is better when you work for fair trade. And there's equal opportunities for um, women and men, boys and girls. So I'm obviously out of paper. I'm gonna go to my next paper. And I'm not gonna put a heading because I'm gonna staple these together. But I think, um, so we're on number six. So here we go. Did everyone see that little bug there? Remember, we're looking for the ladybug every time. What about this, asked Henry, holding up a brightly colored shirt. This shirt was made in Ghana, said Aunt Mabel. Some women dye the fabric and other women sew the dyed fabric into clothes instead of just buying products from these, instead of just buying products from these women one time, fair trade organizations keep coming back to place more orders. Continued orders provide the artists with a steady income. When people have a steady income, they're able to plan for their future. When you buy this shirt, you're helping women in Ghana plan for their future. So, the principle is building sustainable long-term relationships. So long-term relationships is what we're going to write down. They're not just going to sell it to someone once. They're going to get into a relationship with the people who are buying, the, buy the consumers and the producers. So that way they can depend on having money consistently. Fair trade organizations build long-term partnerships with producers. Because of these stable relationships, the producers can count on orders and make long-term plans for their businesses. Fair trade fact. One of the areas in which fair trade goods are rapidly expanding in recent years is clothing and cotton items. Okay, does anyone see the ladybug? I'm not sure, so let's just go on. Stella and Henry looked around and saw a beautiful wall hanging. Does this tree help too, they asked. Aunt Mabel smiled. Oh yes, this lovely wall hanging was made in Haiti. In many parts of the world, including Haiti, People are forced to work very long hours in dirty, dangerous workplaces. People who work in fair trade have clean, safe places to work and aren't forced to work long hours. Fair trade helps more kids go to school and have a chance to play. No children are taken advantage of with fair trade. When you buy this wall hanging, you help artisans have a safe, clean, and fair work environment. So this is a really important one, supporting good working conditions. Let's put number seven. Working conditions, maybe you don't want to work too many hours a day. You want to be in a clean place. It's good for your health. And if you call yourself a fair trade company you have to provide good working conditions for your workers 
Very important that people work in good conditions. All work sites must be safe and clean. No children are exploited and no slaves are used. If you buy something fair trade, you can be sure that the people who made it are being treated with dignity and respect. Fair trade fact, it is estimated that 158 million children between the ages of five to 14 are involved in child labor around the world. So that's a pretty high number of kids who have to work. And we know that kids should be at school. Not sure if you see the ladybug. I don't see it yet. Okay, we're at our last principle. Is there any way that kids can help fair trade without having to buy things? Asked Stella. Absolutely, said Aunt Mabel. Children are important for fair trade to succeed. Most people don't know what fair trade is. So children can help to spread the word. Principle eight, educating people about fair trade and encouraging them to get involved. Everyone along the supply chain needs to tell people about fair trade and how important it is. People need to be encouraged to get involved. Volunteers are always needed. The more that people get involved with fair trade, the more producers, people who make the stuff, and their families all over the world will live better lives. Fair trade fact. Stories about producers are often attached to fair trade items. This is a great way to get to know about people involved in fair trade. This is some soap I got from uh, the Global Gifts shop on the square. They sell all fair trade products. Um, and it says here, your purchase makes a difference. And it says on the side, your purchase provides artisans at the Palam Rural Center with adequate housing and water, medical assistance, and education funds for their children. You can see here, it was made in India. And this fair trade company gives opportunities for artisans in developing countries to earn income by bringing their products and stories to our markets through long-term fair trading relationships. So that's what they're talking about. There's always a little story, not always, but there's often a little story that goes with fair trade products. And I looked up uh, the Palam Rural Center and saw this picture of this woman making the soap. It says the makers. It says Palam Rural Center offers employment opportunities to people of the marginalized Harajan community in southeastern India. And marginalized means those people aren't always given good opportunities, just like we were reading about with principle one, right? Palomaral Center seeks to build a bridge to the markets of the rest of the world. So that's kind of neat that when you buy a fair trade, you know you're doing, giving people some good help. So what was our final principle, educating people about fair trade and encouraging them to get involved. So the stories that they put on the products teach us about the producers and then we can tell other people. So let's put, yeah, it says stories about producers are often attached. So let's put for number eight, sharing stories. about the producers. Maybe I'll make a little picture of my soap there. long-term relationships. I'm going to put a clock just to represent a, a long time people keep buying from them. And I'll just say, put my, my arrows around it to indicate 
it keeps going. In good working conditions. I'm going to put someone who's working and who's feeling safe where they work. Okay, there's a little bit more of the book, but we're going to wrap it up today. So good job. And then you will work on your lit log and let me know what you think of the beginning of the book.